Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here with lesson number two on using your new BeagleBone Black. Hopefully you already have your equipment ordered and, in, and it is in and you can follow along with me. If it is like mine, it comes a little box. When we open up the box, we can see that we have a brand spanking new BeagleBone Blackboard. I like the feel of this thing. I just like the way it looks. It just feels like something that's very well made. And we also have a USB cable, the two things that we will need to get started. What I'm going to do in today's lesson is I'm going to show you how to boot up the uh, the BeagleBone Black, how to get connected to it and talking to it, and then I'm going to show you how to connect to it through SSH or basically using PuTTY. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to bring up a terminal window, our old Linux terminal window, and then you can start doing all the things that you know how to do in Linux and all the things you know how to do in Python. If you've been through our series of lessons on the RAS Raspberry Pi, or if you're just knowledgeable to begin with, you will know how to start doing things once you get the terminal window up. But what I want to do is I want to get you to the point that you can have it booted and you can have access to it through the terminal window. And then also on this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to get the remote desktop running where from a remote computer you can uh, have a, a Linux desktop running. The reason I do it this way is uh, the Raspberry Pi had four USB ports and so it was very easy to have a keyboard and have a mouse and have a, an, an internet connection and, and have a display. It was very easy to bring it up a little bit like you would a full-blown desktop computer. The BeagleBone, however, just has a single USB, just a single USB connection, and because of that, it uh, is a little bit harder to run in standalone mode. So what I like to do is I like to remotely connect to it from a PC and then have my various, whether it's a command line or a remote desktop running on the PC. If all this sounds foreign, don't worry. I'm going to step you through it step by step. I assume on these lessons that you know nothing, okay, because that's how I started out, and that's the type of help I needed. So step one, what we're going to do is I do this a little bit different than the instructions on the uh, uh, site, uh, the, the, the BeagleBone site. What I want to do is as quickly as possible, I want to be con uh, communicating over over Ethernet and so I want to make sure when it boots up that it assigns an IP address and so what I want you to do is I want you to plug in the Ethernet cord to your as uh, to your BeagleBone first and after the Ethernet cord is plugged in then plug in the USB power cord and by doing that then when it boots up it'll give it an IP address. Uh, let's see if I can get a look here and I will show you this is the Ethernet right here and then this is the power through USB right here, and that's the cord that comes with the uh, BeagleBone Black. You'll plug that into the computer and then plug it into here. Okay, but as I said, the first thing we want to do is we want to plug the Ethernet cord in first and understand, of course, the other end of that Ethernet cord is plugged into your router or your network. And then this cable is already plugged into my computer. And so when I come and plug this in, down underneath there, it's a little bit of a hidden, a hidden plug there, down underneath there, when I plug that in, with a little luck, I should see the thing come to life and some lights come on. So it's kind of waiting there hoping that those lights come on. There it is. Okay. So those lights are coming on and it's giving me all the happy signs to show that it is probably booting up at this point. So let's see if we can get it shown. Okay. That looks good. There you got a good view of it. So we have got the beagle bone and what just happened is the PC recognized that something was plugged into the USB port. It's seeing something come to life and so that's a good sign too I think that the PC is recognizing that it's come to life. But what you need is for us to go to the next step what you need to do is you need to go to the beagle bone website. So we are going to go beagle bone and then I'm going to say getting started and then there is the site uh, let's see beagleboard.org slash getting dash started that's the site that I want and so I'm going to go there it looks like that my uh, beagle board is booted up at this point and so we've done step one which is to plug uh, your beagle in via USB 
we want to go down to step two now, and that is that you need some software, you need some drivers on your PC so that your PC can talk to the Beagle board. All this is doing is it's setting up a little network over USB, and that allows you to connect to, uh, to over USB. The only reason that I'm connecting over USB so I can look at it and I can see what its IP address is. But nonetheless, we will need to do that. I'm on a 64-bit machine, so you would just click here, okay? And so it's going to come down very quickly and install. And then you would click on that. Of course, install on it. And then next, next, next through. It's just a typical installation. If you're on a 32-bit machine, you would go here. Uh, if you're on Mac, you would go here. Or this for Linux. <clears throat> on Windows, you might need to reboot after you installed the drivers and just reboot and get back to where, uh, where we are here. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to connect to the BeagleBone Black. We need to connect to it over USB. And we do that by putting in its, its uh, uh, USB IP address. And this will be the same for all of us because this is kind of hardwired in. 192.168.6. Like that. And if you just type that in, you come to this web page. This is not a web page on the World Wide Web. This is a web page running on your BeagleBone Black. And so what we're going to do here is now we have connected to the BeagleBone Black from the PC. We're talking to it. What we need to do is to get the IP address. The way we would get the IP address is to come over here to Cloud9 IDE. Click on that. We come here to the Cloud9 section where it says Cloud9 IDE. Click on that. That takes us to a Cloud9 uh, integrated development environment that is running on the BeagleBone. If you have an error here, make sure that you're not using Internet Explorer. This will not run on Internet Explorer. I have it working on Google Chrome. There was one time that I got an error from Google Chrome that it wouldn't connect. Most of the time it seems to work with Google Chrome. If Google Chrome isn't working, go back to Firefox. Download Firefox and I have found that it always connects happily from Firefox. But most of the time I don't have problems from Chrome. What this is, is this is an integrated development environment that you could go in and start running programs and writing programs, kind of like the Arduino IDE. But as I looked at it, there were a lot of things that I wasn't familiar with and I don't really want to go in and learn a new IDE. I want to take advantage of the things I already know. So the strategy that I'm taking is I want to go back and I want to run in Linux and I want to run Python programs. And so that's how I'm going to show you how to run the BeagleBone Black is over Linux and with Python. Because we learn Linux and we learn Python in the series of lessons on the Raspberry Pi, or many of you probably already know Linux and, and Python. So that's the path that I'm going to take to show you how to get this thing running. Someday I might come back and learn more about this uh, Cloud9 and maybe make some lessons on it, but for right now I want to just see if I can get the BeagleBone going without having to learn a completely new environment. Alright, so that's a lot said to just say all we're really trying to do is just get the IP address, the real Ethernet IP address. What I need you to do is come to this plus sign and then click plus and then get a new terminal. Now I know that you probably these letters are real small and move very quickly to a window that will have bigger letters but I need you to just follow along with me until we get the IP address and then we will get it where you can read it nice and big on your screen. But for right now just bear with me. Okay when I came up, let me do that again, when I came up and said plus give me a new terminal window this opens a Linux window, a Linux terminal window here so you could do something like ls and all the commands that you already know from uh, Linux. What I want to do is I want to get the IP address so I type in ifconfig ifconfig and when I click enter it will give me up here at the top my Ethernet IP address and I should not have clicked on that. Let me uh, kill that and I'm going to write that down 10.1.15.25 yours will be different 
Okay, all of us over the USB, this is the Ethernet address over the USB, but when you plug in your Ethernet cable, you will get your own unique IP. For me, it's 10.1.15.25. Yours will be different. But go ahead and get that and write it down. Okay, now we can close out of this. We can say, no, I don't want any of that stuff. We can kill that. And now what we want to do is we want to try to we want to try to remotely log in to the BeagleBone Black from an SSH client. And the SSH client that I use is Putty. Okay, if you don't have Putty, it is a free program that is very easy to get. Just go to your Google browser and type in Putty Load. Okay, when you type in Putty Download, it's a little bit of a strange uh, URL here, but it's the chiark greenend.org.uk. That's the one you want. You come here. For me, I am on Windows, and what I want is I want .exe. I don't want any of that other nonsense, so I'm just going to click on that and Putty Downloads. If you're in Chrome, it shows up nice and easy down here. It's finished downloading. You would click on it and then just go through the next sequence just very quickly. You will have it installed. Of course, it already has it, so I don't need to do that. What I do need to do is now you have Putty installed. I have Putty installed. Let's connect to the BeagleBone Black over Putty. So I bring Putty up. <coughs> I want to be on a session. And now I put in that address, the real one, the Ethernet IP address. For me, it was 10.1.15.25. And if you wrote it down, you can put your IP address in. If you didn't write it down, you're going to have to back up and go back and get it again. So now we will say open. And look at this. I get a Linux terminal window come open wanting me to log in. The default login is root with no password. So R-O-O-T. No password, boom, I am logged in. I know that you can't see this very well. I'm very quickly going to get us somewhere where we have a bigger uh, bigger font. But I just want to show you that at this point, we can connect. So I could say uh, ls, and you see that I've got nothing. Where am I? I am in the root folder. PWD shows me that. Let's write a real quick Python program just to show that we can run things here. So I'm going to say nano. And I'm going to say test.py. It comes up. I'm going to say print. <coughs> Hello world. Hello world. And then I'm going to get print. I'm, no, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Texas says howdy, folks. Okay. Make it a little bit personal there, not the same old hello world we always do. All right. So how do I save it? Control O. Control O asks me, do I want that file name? I just click enter. Yes, that's the file name we set up. How do I get out? Control X. So Control O, enter Control X. Let's try to run that program. So I will say Python test.py. I am in the same folder that I saved it in, so I don't have to put any path names in there. And boom, Texas has howdy, folks. Very good. Now I'm going to remove that test.py so I don't leave junk laying around. Okay, I do an ls. All right, I'm back to where I started. So this is just showing I can get a terminal window. I can interact with uh, the BeagleBone uh, Black. We've written our first program. Okay, how do we get something that's a little bit easier to work with, a little bit more friendly to connect to the BeagleBone Black? What I like is I like tight VNC. Okay. Tight VNC server is already installed on the BeagleBone Black, but you need to get a viewer for your PC. So let's go back to our PC. And what you want to do is you want to get tight VNC viewer, not server. You want the viewer to run on the PC. Now you can see here, download tight VNC. See, it's www.totvnc.com slash download PHP. We go there, and then there's some licensing terms, and it says download Tight VNC for Windows. Okay, there is an installer for Windows 64-bit, uh, and there is an installer for Windows 32-bit. What we are going to do is we are going to download the... Uh, 
we are going to down download the 64. Okay, we're going to install the uh, Windows 64 bit. You would install whichever one would be uh, would be appropriate for your uh, for your uh, computer. So I'm going to click here, and you can see very quickly it is going to download, and then we will uh, we will get it installed. Okay, while you're waiting for it to download, you can go ahead and get a cup of coffee. It looks like it's going to take about three minutes, so I will be right back. Downloaded now, so we are ready to install it. You can come over here and click on it. Okay, okay you click on it, and now you're going to say run, and then it will, let's see, give it a second here. There it goes. Okay, so we're ready to go through this. It says welcome. We just click next. Okay, uh, on mine it's already installed, so it's asking me if I want to do, uh, you know, a remove. Well, no, I don't. So you would just go ahead and, and, and step through it. Uh, let's see, I'll just say repair here and then repair and then, uh, okay. So you can see you'll see the same, uh, the same type of thing as you, uh, as you go through it. Okay, and then it says that it is all set up, and so then I say finish. Okay, you must restart your system for the new configuration changes. Uh, click to restart now. Okay, so you can restart your computer, and then you will be ready to connect to the uh, BeagleBone Black with a remote desktop. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and restart. Okay, after your restart, you should have Type VNC Viewer. Uh, icon on your desktop so you should be ready to run it from your desktop now okay but before you can run it on your PC you have to fire up the VNC server on your BeagleBone Black so we need to go back and connect to the BeagleBone Black using PuTTY which you should have and then remember your IP address mine was 10.1.15.25 and so that should let me putty into it or SSH into it. And then this is what you are going to want to do. Get your terminal window up here and you will want to you will want to uh, log on. So we're going to say again root with no password. So we are logged on. The new versions of the uh, BeagleBone Black come with type VNC already installed. So, you know, for mine, it's already on there because I have a new one. And yours probably is already on there too. If you don't already have it on there, you could install it by saying sudo and then apt.get install and then type VNC server. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and just do that and you can see that it's saying for me it's already on there so I don't need to do anything else. Now the first time you run it after you've installed it you need to run it as tight T-I-G-H-T-V-N-C server. This is what configures it. You don't have to do this every time you have to just do it one time the first time that you run tight VNC or the first time you're going to run it. Tight VNC server enter and then it wants to know the path. I will type in my password okay and enter. It wants the password again. Oh, I, I made it too long. Okay so let's play. Uh, only eight characters. Okay. Would you like to enter a view only password? No I wouldn't. Okay. So now it's created some files and it's actually ready to run type VNC server. You didn't run the server then, all you did was just set it up and give yourself a password. So now to run it, this is what you type. VNC server, VNC server, no type, just VNC server and then space colon 1 for display 1. Okay, then for a geometry uh, you need to put minus geometry. This is how big you want the screen to be. So dash geometry 
for mine, I'm going to check my screen resolution real quick here. Uh, I am going to use uh, 1280 by 800. So I'm going to use 1280 by 800. If you wanted to fill a big screen all, all the way up, you might use 1920 by 1080. Okay, but you can play around with different screen sizes. Then a minus depth, D-E-P-T-H, and put that at 24, and a minus DPI, and put that at 96. So again, VNC server, space, colon 1, that's saying display 1, space, minus geometry, space. I'm using a screen size of 1280 by 800. You can try different ones. Minus and then it's all right, 1200 by, uh, 1280 by 800 space, then minus depth, D-E-P-T-H, space, 24, space, dash, D-P-I, space, 96. And then if I run that, okay, it says that uh, it is already running, so that's fine. I've just fired it up again. And so now you see how to do that. Okay, so we go back to the PC now. We go back to the PC. And we open up Type VNC Viewer. How do we connect? You go 10.1, you put in your IP address. For me, it was 10.1.15.25. You put in your IP address. Then you put in colon 1. Remember when we fired it up? We fired it up at colon 1. Now we're going to run it at colon 1. So now I am going to say connect. Okay, it's asking me for my password. This is the VNC password. This is not the BeagleBone password. This is the, the VNC server password that you just set up on the BeagleBone. Okay, I put that in. And boom, look at that. I have a graphical user interface, a desktop that has just popped up. And so this is the desktop of the BeagleBone Black, and I'm running it remotely on my PC. If you come down here, you will start seeing things that are familiar for a Linux uh, system. Uh, you can come in and see that there's uh, the Chrome browser is on there. You've got some accessories on there. What I want is I want a terminal window. Okay, so I'm going to come and I'm going to say accessories, and then I'm going to say my LX terminal. And boom, there is my terminal window. Now what I promised you and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this where you can see it better because I can come under File, Edit, and I can do Preferences. And I'm going to make it a white background. With a little luck, I will make it a white background. OK, there it goes. I'll say OK and then black on white, and then I'll make this font like way bigger. And in fact, it's pretty small, so I'm going to make it, let's see, about a 26 and see. Okay, that really looks good. Like, I think you probably can read that really good. So where are we now? We are running a remote desktop. So, man, that terminal window got huge. Uh, I wonder if it did that. Oh, when I changed the font, it did that. So I need to get this back on the back on the screen. So I'll move this and move it. When I changed the font, it made the window huge. And so I just want to get it where you can see everything. Okay, and now same thing this way. Made it bigger in all dimensions. So I'm just going to need to get this resized where you and I are seeing the same thing because you get very upset if I'm typing things and I can see it and you can't see it. So I will bring that down like that. Okay, so now we have a terminal window running. Well, let's just look LS. Okay, I've got desktop and that's it. I could do a PWD. Where am I? I'm in the root folder. Let's try to run a Python program. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make a directory. So I'm going to say make directory and uh, ooh, make directory and it's going to be my underscore Python. Okay, and now I'm going to make the Python program nano and I'm going to say my pi, my uh, python.py. Okay, and then I'm going to say uh, print 
Texas says howdy. Enter, control O, enter, control X, and now I'm going to do a Python my pi.py and I get a Texas says howdy. Okay, so where are we? We've made a lot of progress today. We have booted up our BeagleBone Black. Not only are we booted up, we can connect to it from the simple uh, uh, Telnet uh, SSH uh, client putty, the real simple little window, or we can boot up in a nice uh, graphical interface, a nice desktop. We, so we have remote desktop access and we also have direct putty access. And so now we are ready to go in and actually start doing something. We can boot it up, we can get it going, we can talk to it. We're ready to do things now. This is Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. This has been lesson number two. Tune in shortly for lesson number three. And I believe in lesson number three, we will just play a little bit more around with, with what Python we're on and getting the Python, making sure everything's working right with Python. And then after that, we will start working with these GPIO pins. We will actually go in and start learning how to read and write right from those pins. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. If you found this lesson useful, give us a thumbs up. Think about sharing it. Subscribe to the channel. Give us some feedback. Let me know that people are actually watching these videos. We will talk to you guys.